Hi everybody. I was here last week at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills and Naya Rivera's plaque hadn't been placed yet. I had heard that it was here and I've been back a few times since she was laid to rest. And I see they don't really have the date listed on her plaque. They just have the year, 1987 to 2020. I was here searching for someone else today, so I thought, well, I'll just come and take a look just in case they placed her plaque. And sure enough, here it is. Naya Rivera, probably best known for her role on the TV show Glee. At least that's how I know her the best. I know she was in other TV shows and movies, but I remember her most from Glee. And I really like the epitaph where it says, Amazing mother, daughter, sister, and friend, heaven gained our sassy angel. And she definitely was sassy. And from the looks of all the flowers here, I'm guessing the plaque was probably just placed in the last few days. I'm sure they had a ceremony, probably friends and family. So I'm glad she's located here right next to Sandra D, one crypt in between, and Gerard Marenghi, or Jerry Marin. Remember him? He was one of the lollipop kids from The Wizard of Oz. Actually says it right on his, uh, his plaque. It says, in loving memory of the Wizard of Oz lollipop kid. So she's certainly in good company here. And next to Jerry is his wife, who was also one of the munchkins. It's very sad that she died so young, but it's really nice that she's in such a beautiful final resting place here. Her crypt is located here in the Sanctuary of Enduring Protection, which is within the Courts of Remembrance. And there are many famous people laid to rest here in these courts. Rivera was born on January 12, 1987 in Valencia, California, and sadly died at the young age of 33 from an accidental drowning in Lake Piru, which is located just about 20 miles or so from where she was born. For those of you who might not be familiar with her, she was a model, a singer, and an actress who appeared in more than 30 movies and TV shows and was a regular cast member on the popular TV show Glee, which ran from 2009 to 2015. She played the sarcastic and often bitchy lesbian cheerleader Santana Lopez. In addition to all of the flowers, it looks like a fan or a friend or maybe a family member left this photo a note which reads, Naya Rivera, I miss you so much and I love you more. Butterflies can't see their wings. They can't see how truly beautiful they are, but everyone else can. People are like that as well. The entire script on her plaque reads, Amazing mother, daughter, sister and friend, Heaven gained our sassy angel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6 Right across the hallway there to the left is the Sanctuary of Salvation Corridor where a couple of other famous people are also interred. I'll walk over there in a minute and visit their crypts, but first I want to pan around here and show you a little bit more of Naya Rivera's corridor. The tower that you see there straight ahead on the top of the hill is right behind the Hollywood sign, which is just on the other side of that hill. I always like to point out just how close this cemetery is to downtown Hollywood, which certainly makes sense considering all of the Hollywood royalty laid to rest here. And I just have to mention that this courtyard is actually very peaceful and tranquil, but I purchased a new camera recently that picks up and dramatically enhances and magnifies any background noise. So the freeway noise that's off in the distance is much louder here on camera, just in case you were wondering. It's outstanding for picking up voices, but not so great when it comes to background noise. And since I'm sure some of you will ask, it's the Sony ZV-1 digital camera made for vlogging. To find Rivera's Crypt is very easy. From the street, you enter the Courts of Remembrance, you take the sidewalk straight back until you can't walk any further, and you'll see her crypt on the right. Today is November 1st, 2020, and it was announced yesterday on Halloween that actor Sean Connery had died at the age of 90. For baby boomers like me, Sean Connery will always be remembered as the first and the best James Bond on the silver screen. Cubby Broccoli, or Broccoli, was the producer of those 007 films, and you can see his crypt from Rivera's crypt, so I wanted to mention and remember Bracoli and Connery here today as well. As I mentioned earlier, there are a few more famous people laid to rest here in the corridor to the left of the statue. If you lived in Southern California from 1960 until his death in 2002, there's a very good chance that you had seen Jerry Dunphy on TV. And if you lived anywhere else in the world, there's an equally good chance that you recognized him from the movies. 
For decades, Dunphy was the most popular TV news anchor in Los Angeles. He also appeared in more than 20 very popular movies, including The Patsy, Oh God, Beverly Hills Cop 3, and Independence Day. In case you don't remember him, he was usually the one playing the TV anchorman. He was so popular, he even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He died from a heart attack in Los Angeles on May 20, 2002, at the age of 80. On the opposite wall, near the end of the corridor, is the final resting place of model and talk show host Carol Vitale. At least I assume that's how her name is pronounced. It could be Vitale. For years, she suffered from lupus and scleroderma, and sadly, at the age of 61, she took her own life with a self-inflicted gunshot on July 23, 2008. Her epitaph reads, CV to my friends, signing off eternally, and you know what I always say, until the next time, bye-bye. Below her, on the bottom row, is the crypt of cowboy actor Dyke Johnson, whose real name was Coy. And he certainly seems to have a lot of fans. Look at all those lipstick kisses. And I assume that's his wife's crypt to the left of him, but I wasn't able to find any information online about her at all. His Find a Grey Memorial page says that back in the 1950s and 60s, he appeared in movies such as Ride Lonesome, The Rise and Fall of Legs Diamond, and Comanche Station. He also appeared on the popular TV western, The Virginian. His epitaph is pretty fun, too. It reads, Never saw a horse that couldn't be rode. Never saw a cowboy that couldn't be throwed. I guess he was a poet as well. And this week, I'd like to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Max Wells and Mark Simpson, for very generously increasing their pledges. Thanks so much, Max and Mark. And thank you, too, to all of my many new subscribers who have really been helping my channel to grow. It's very appreciated. If you liked today's video, I hope you'll join me in another one by clicking and watching the video shown here. So until our next trip down memory lane together, happy travels, everyone.